Well, good morning, everybody out there in the YouTube universe. This is Cruise Man, and I am just getting ready to head home once again after having gotten my work done here at Einstein's. And I had a couple things that uh, were just kind of on my mind over some emails I received recently. I thought, hey, I'll just get on the bike, turn on the cameras, and we'll have a chat. And by the way, if you're new to the channel, if this is your first time or second time or whatever, If you have a passion for motorcycles, or if you just have a passion to listen to somebody ramble, please click the subscribe button down below. And don't forget to click that little bell icon. YouTube will notify you when we come out with new videos. So today I was gonna talk to you a little bit about the brand new GoPro Hero 10 that was just introduced this week. For those of you that have to close my visor, it's pretty windy. Let me raise my windshield up here. That'll help a little bit. Get some of that wind noise off. The uh, GoPro Hero 10 was introduced, and some of you may know I use the GoPro Hero 8. I have two of them. I have one on the handlebars and one on the helmet. And when they came out with the Hero 9 last year, uh, there really wasn't much of a compelling reason to upgrade. I tried to stay up with the newest and the latest and the greatest gear, but uh, it just didn't really give me any real compelling reason to spend another 500 bucks. Well, unfortunately, I think I'm going to have to say the same thing about the GoPro Hero 10. Um, I, I was ready to pull the trigger and order two of them, or at least order one and try it out. What I do like about the 9 and the 10 is it has the little front facing camera. So on this GoPro on the handlebar I could actually see how everything's framed as I'm going down the road. That'd be kind of nice. But the, the main reason I'm not going to order it is because I've seen a couple of reviews. Now these are pre-release, you know, that they uh, GoPro sends out to media to, to uh, influencers YouTube influencers it's not probably the final version of the firmware but those two reviewers had a problem with the cameras overheating and I can't deal with that so I think after like 20 minutes depending on what mode you're in uh, if you're in like 2.7 K or 4 K the cameras just overheat and shut off and sometimes I do motor vlogs that are 20 minutes long. Not all the time, not often, but I don't want to have to worry about it. Especially if I'm outside on a hot day. These guys are in a studio that's air conditioned and it's overheating. I can imagine being out here in 95 degree weather. So, the GoPro Hero 10 is a non-starter unless they're able to get that fixed with a firmware update. So, do any of you have the GoPro Hero 10 on order or do you have it already? I think you can already buy it at Best Buy and some of the stores. Amazon probably has it, I'm not sure. So, I'm just curious what your experience has been, if you have one. The other thing, the main thing I really wanted to talk to you about today, and, and I guess it's a pretty good day since we're driving in traffic, is kind of a motorcycle safety related topic. And that's kind of pertains to the right of way. You know, this is kind of a legal term uh, in traffic law. And it doesn't really apply if you're on a motorcycle. Now what I'm what I mean by that is that you sort of have to take the view that if you're riding on two wheels among all these giants out here, that you never have the right of way. 
right of way is in direct proportion to how many wheels you have on the ground and how much your vehicle weighs. If a pickup truck weighs 4,000 pounds or 5,000 pounds and you weigh 600 pounds, they're going to win that battle every time. So if you're riding a motorcycle, you can sit there and argue all day long that you had the right of way and uh, it ain't going to do you much good. It might be good for your attorney to argue when you're trying to get a legal settlement because you're paralyzed from the neck down for the rest of your life. But it'd be smarter and better if you just kind of took the approach that when you climb onto a motorcycle, you never have the right of way. I don't care what the traffic situation is. See, like this guy just tried to pull over. I saw him turn his wheel to get over into my lane. And uh, I see this all the time. When you ride a motorcycle in a city like Dallas, Texas, you have a, <laughs> I call it a brush with death, almost every time, almost every time you get out in traffic. And that's why it's so annoying I guess I should say when I pull up next to people at stoplights and they're sitting there on their on their cell phone talking on their cell phone or if I drive by and look in the car and they're talking on their cell phone so as I'm riding the bike home I'm always trying to make sure that I have an empty lane next to me on each side if possible like right now and I don't want to stay in this guy's blind spot. So if he decides to jerk over into my lane, I want to make sure he's got room to do that and I've got time to slow down. I'm also looking behind me to see if anybody is following me too closely, which in this case right now they're not. And I've also noticed one other thing, this time of year especially, some of you can see in this camera where the sun is. It's important to know where the sun is because the people coming toward me have that sun in their eyes. So when I'm going through an intersection, if somebody is trying to turn left in front of me, they really may not be able to see me because they're blinded by that sun. So that is another case where I'm very uh, careful and I try to do two things here's one turning left in front of me right here I just turned on my flashers my modulators and I'm also waiting for this car on my left to come up next to me because this makes me appear bigger if if two of us are going through the intersection about the same time that guy in front of me turning left is more likely to see me or see us because now he's got four headlights coming at him instead of just these two small motorcycle lights. So anytime I'm going through an intersection where I see somebody getting ready to turn left in front of me, if I have traffic, I might slow down and let one of these cars catch up or pass me and let them go through first. Let them take the lead because that guy turning left is much more likely to see that car or that truck go through that intersection than he is to see me. So many of you probably already know these things. You probably already do them instinctively, but uh, I just thought, you know, I would share some of my thoughts with you. Because where you position yourself on the road, and I'm not perfect, I make mistakes. I know I get messages from you guys all the time well you're doing this here you're doing that here you shouldn't have been in this lane here you know I am far from perfect when it comes to riding a motorcycle I just uh, try to be as aware as I can and try to use my common sense to position myself where I am 
reducing the amount of danger as much as possible. And that's really all you can do is just try to increase your odds of safety. So, do you guys do that when you go through an intersection? Do you let cars come up next to you and, and take the lead or kind of to kind of present a larger image as you're going through that intersection? Do you do that? But remember, in my opinion anyway, you never have the right of way when you're on two wheels. So that's it. That was just my thought for the day. Remember to ride often, ride comfortably, and ride safe. If you like this video, don't forget to click that little like button. It really does make a huge difference on our YouTube rankings. And I will see you on the next Cruise Man's Garage. Or the next Cruise Man's Motor Vlog. Oh, and by the way, they got the street fixed up here where I was having to ride through water every day coming home. Just thought I'd let you know, they did fix the street. We no longer have that standing water in the street. Thank goodness.